you can't be unequally yoked. You cannot be with somebody that, number one, is not serving the Lord. And if they are serving the Lord, that they're not bearing fruit. Hey guys, welcome to New Light TV. My name is Francis. Today I have a very special guest with me. His name is Carlo. Hello guys, um, it's an honor to be here at New Light TV. Um, over the past two months, I've been talking about relationships, what it's like to wait on God, what it's like to transition from singleness to marriage, what it's like to reminisce on the times that you had a relationship mm -hmm. and you thought that maybe it was love and then you found out it wasn't love or you thought it was healthy but it wasn't healthy and all that kind of stuff since you already were in the world and you dated in the world you had romantic you know partners in the world um what what have you noticed in the lord that's different well in the dating scene what i've noticed in the lord is that um you really have to have spiritual discernment before you go out there and, and, and start dating because uh, a lot of these um, um, single ladies out here I look crazy. <laughs> you really have to stay prayed up you really have to dive into the word you really have to do your research before you go out there and just jump around and start dating a woman here starting a conversation here Oh, and then you'll be opening doors that you don't even know how to close later on I've learned through trial and error you know, um, it's tough out there. It's tough for a single man of God to find a real good woman of God. And one thing that um, I've learned is that you can't be unequally yoked. You cannot be with somebody that, number one, is not serving the Lord. And if they are serving the Lord, that they're not bearing fruit. Um, you're going to get hurt if you're the one that's not really on the level, on the level of that other person that you're trying to date or... You're the person that's above and you're trying to pick that person up. It's much easier for them to bring you down to their level. And uh, I put myself in that situation before and and what you're gonna do, my fellow Christian men and women out there, you're gonna end up flirting with this with sin. You're gonna end up flirting with your old sin. And what, when you start flirting with sin, you're gonna trample on the grace that saves us. Mm -hmm. So you don't wanna do none of that. You don't wanna put yourself in that situation. You have to be sometimes selfish and just know that the situation you're going to get yourself into is not going to do anything for you. It's going to be pointless if the person is not either at your level or in the level above you. And if they're above you, they have to be willing to work with you. They have to be patient with you because not, everybody's not on the same level. I myself have dated guys and I've expected them to be like all the way up here or to be with me, you know, on the same level. And I understand that, you know, we're not supposed to be picky and demanding and that kind of thing, or baby somebody and try to pull them up and, or running, like you're running and I, I can't run with you. You know, like if, if I'm running and we're dating and I'm running and you're not running, what are we gonna do? Like he's crawling and I'm running, what are we gonna do? Or somebody that I'm dating is is running and I don't wanna run anymore because I'm tired or something. It's gonna you be know, a problem. It's, it's so much unequally yoked situations in, in the body of Christ. No matter what you do and how great it seems and how much you could be compatible with each other in every aspect, if God doesn't approve it, it's not gonna work because everything has to be for the purpose that he has for you it has to be like the Tetris, Tetris piece. It has to connect it has completely. To <laughs> so study them, study them before you even decide to date them. Cause nowadays you can't even start dating a person unless you really get to know them either through social media or through your job or through your church. You have to talk to them and, and really communicate, build that communication line before you even decide to date them. Mm -hmm. That's your research. You have to use wisdom. You have to see that person that you want to date, that you're interested in. You have to see them bearing fruit. You have to see that they, they're paying their price. They're carrying their cross daily. And you have to see that they're really doing something with their lives for the Lord, that they're fulfilling their godly ministry. Because I feel like a person who really wants to get blessed with a marriage, they have to be asking God, God, send me that person that's gonna help me fulfill my purpose with you. Yes. 
you know, send me that person that that you know is going to help me fulfill my ministry and I'm going to help them just as equally because I know that they're doing God's work. And somebody that that doesn't mind that at three o'clock in the morning, I have to disciple to somebody, whether it be a man or a female. Yeah, because imagine having somebody that's trying to control you or limit you or is always like telling you, no, you can't. When you date somebody, you know, you're building a bond, regardless of what, you're building a soul tie. A soul tie, you spiritual know? soul tie, even if you don't have any kind of physical. Yes, you know, like David and Jonathan. David and Jonathan were two, they were best friends. They did not have sex. They did never kiss, you know, and the Bible says that their souls were knit to each knit other. Knit to each other. You know, so that's a friendship. You're building a soul tie. When you meet that person's family, when you, when you um, interact with each other a lot, Sharing secrets, sharing secrets, intimacy, vulnerability. You don't want to go there. You don't want to go there with just anybody. You yeah. want to go there with a person that is really, really, really Christ-centered. Like, everything in their life revolves around God. Um, One of the things that I do realize about bearing fruit is that we, we focus so much on, on, I guess, appearance. You know, we focus on appearance, we focus on church attendance sometimes, we focus on what they post on their social media, we we focus on like, are they nice, are they pretty, are they handsome, can they sing, can they do this, like those, we think that's fruit, you know, but Galatians 5.22, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit, fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, yeah. gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. You know, one of the biggest things for me, you know, um, personally, I'm big on self-control up there. I'm not all up there. You know, my, my self-control was way better. I think that when you when you do walk with somebody or with people or make friends that are not edifying for you, Oof. you lose self-control, you know, and then you have to fight that out again to build yourself up to that. You know, like, I, you know, the story that's coming to my mind is like Nehemiah. You know, Nehemiah had to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem because the walls had fallen. Sometimes the walls in our lives fall. Yes. You know, whether that's self-control or love, you know, love, the, the walls that we have up of love, they will, they will fall because somebody betrayed us or somebody spoke ill of us or somebody told a lie about us or somebody Amen. was condescending to us or somebody dismissed us. You know, all those things, gossip, oh my God, there's so many things that can contaminate and break down our walls, you know, but God today, he's bringing this to my mind, you know, and in this conversation so that we could bear fruit, you know, rebuild what God, you probably lost in the Lord, you know, because you were chasing after maybe something carnal, like a, a companion, you know, God wants us to have a companion. The Bible says that Adam was alone and Jesus, God said, it is not good that man be alone. So who gave Adam a companion? It was God. But remember that Adam had to be doing what God ordained him to do for him to feel like, wow, he can't do this alone. So you, brother, that's out there by yourself, busy. you have to be busy. You have to be doing what God called you to do. That's the only way that God is going to send you your wife. So you have to get so lost and so and fall in love with the Lord and just focus on worshiping him, fulfilling your ministry that he sees. Hey, now it's time for me to bless him with somebody. He's ready. It reminds me of Adam. God had to put Adam to sleep. And then God had to wake him up and show him the woman, you know. So sometimes, guys, sometimes during this season, like during the waiting season, the singleness season, the rebuilding your wall season, maybe God is just having you work, focus on him, pray, build your own faith up, bring, build your own character up, build your integrity up, build you, yourself in your God. Your self-control. Your self-control. <laughs> build yourself in God first. And then in a second, he's going to wake you up. He's going to tap you on the shoulder. Look, that, Look at your wife right here. Look at your wife right here. You know? And that could happen. That could happen with a sister in the church. That, that, that she's been there forever and you just didn't even notice and, her. And you didn't think she was attractive. But now when you see... When God gives you those eyes to see, now you're going to see her in a different light. And you'll be ready. You'll be ready to to, to, to to step up and actually pursue her and be her Boaz. Yes. He saw Ruth, right? And she was picking up sheaves. She was picking up. She was working. She was working. She was working too, okay? She was working. 
And he said, who's that? Who that? Hey. Mm. Who she belong to? He literally asked that. Who wife is that? <laughs> he literally asked that. He said, who's wife? Who does she belong to, you know? And, and, when, and they said, you know, she belongs to Naomi. She's actually a widow, this and that. She wasn't praying for her husband. She was minding her own business. She was working on what she needed to do for her and her family to, to survive. You know, she had left Moab. You know, she was from a distant land. She wasn't even a Jew. She wasn't even a daughter of God, a child of God. Like she was not in the covenant of God. She was a, in a whole other place. And she came with Naomi because she loved Naomi so much that Naomi literally became, like her mother-in-law became her, her love, like her best friend, her mentor, her, her mother really you know let me let me let's go down the list esther she was the one that kind of prepared like beforehand for about two years she prepared beforehand she by herself prepared right yes she didn't meet her husband so that one night and he was like oh it's her another one um isaac and rebecca and rebecca didn't even meet isaac before saying yes wow. she lived in a certain place that's one of my favorite stories because rebecca said yes rebecca decided to move from one place, from her family's house, to where Isaac was. She left everything without knowing how he looked, no, not knowing anything about him. Just on faith. So on, God on, had her man already. You know? So imagine God does that to us. Like, well, what about if God does that to you? <laughs> Jacob and Rachel. You know Jacob and Rachel, guys? Jacob worked, you know how long he worked? 14 years. People say seven years, but it's really 14 because seven years, his uncle Laban gave him Leah. But he was really working for Rachel because he felt in love at first sight with Rachel, right? Mm -hmm. He decided to work seven years for her. On the wedding night, Laban tricked him and gave him Leah. Wow. When he woke up the next morning, he didn't notice. I don't know what that, what was that about, but he did not notice. And the next morning, when he went to, to like, Laban, you played me, what happened? Laban tells him um, that he couldn't give off the, the oldest, the, 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 the youngest before the oldest, da, 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 da. and then he says, okay, I'm going to work seven years. I'm going to work another seven years, right? So he ended up working 14 years, even though he got Rachel that same day when he agreed to work another seven years, he still had to work another seven years. So he technically, not technically, he worked 14, 14 years, years for a woman. For a woman. Y'all men, are y'all ready for that? Well, all that being said, I hope that you guys were edified. If people can take away three three things, just three simple things from what would you want them to take away? The men or the women? Number one, you have to ask God to give you the patience, the discernment, and the wisdom when, when it comes to choosing your life mate. The second thing is you have to notice that if they're bearing fruit, if it's a woman that's busy, if it's a woman that really, really, really has paid her price, is carrying her cross, and also check how they are around other people. You have to do your research. You have to do your research on that person. You really have to test the spirits. You mm -hmm. have to test the spirits because like the, like the enemy comes in the, in the form of an angel. Satan will send a woman that looks exactly like what you want your wife to be in. She might just be in it, this in disguise, just waiting to get you at your lowest. Mm. And then you'll end up falling. And then you'll remember what you got delivered from. Remember where you were at back then. You don't want to go back there. You want to keep going forward. You want to keep going forward and finish this race. Jesus is coming soon. Repent and you shall be saved. Amen. God bless you. Um, you want to pray for the people? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Dear God, thank you for glory, this opportunity. Lord, God. Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I hope that everybody out there gets edified, especially the men watching, the women, the single women, the single Christians out here watching, that you, that this union between me and Lion of the Savior Ministries and New Light TV, that this collaboration edifies those that are listening, that they could get that wisdom, that they could learn something new on how to go out there and, and um, choose wisely, Lord. Lord, I pray that everyone, you know, in their season of singleness, that they do what you call them to do, that we continue doing what you called us to do, Father God. And that, Lord, 
again, that they choose wisely when they're out here just praying for that spouse, praying for that. And that everybody individually just gets themselves ready to be that wife, to be that husband. Yes, that, that, that in this season of singleness, while they're doing God's work, they're taking that time out to study, to, to, to read the Proverbs, to, to, to study what they want, what they want, how they want to become. If you want to be a husband, if you want to be a wife, study scripture, L look at people that are, that are great husbands and how they read their books, do, um, listen to their preachings and just Lord edify those people, convict them of whatever they're doing wrong. Let them clean up yes. their act, Lord. And Lord, I, I pray that everyone gets the person that they need in their life. We all need, we all need some help. We all need a companion. And, um, Lord, I pray, they, I pray that you bless these people that are listening. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.